Ian Yaya from Tigo, Tanzania, Yaya Njuri. I'll be leading the deployments of the M Farmer project in Tanzania. The business case for launching a mobile information service in Tanzania was based on the fact that agriculture is the biggest contributor to the GDP in, uh, in Tanzania. It involves more than 80% of the workforce and uh, also for Tigo it was a good way actually to reach the rural areas where we don't have a good footprint. So based on that we expect to increase our revenues overall, we expect also to increase our vast revenues and to increase our customer base as well. The indirect benefits that Tigo perceived for launching that service uh, are first of all customer loyalty. Okay, because after piloting and testing, we understood that this service needed to be branded in the eyes of the customers so that it can actually be perceived as a service of quality. So we expect a high level of loyalty from the part of the customer. Also, it will increase the brand awareness uh, in the eyes of the farmers, especially in rural areas. And we expect Tigo to be perceived as the brand of everybody, especially the farmers. We assess the farmers needs by looking at a couple of things. First of all, we needed to understand what the agriculture cycle is all about. Because we understand that actually farmers have different needs depending on the cycle in which they are in. Okay? After that, we actually needed to segment the needs of the farmers and to segment the behaviors of the farmers and to understand how farmers are different regarding the cultural aspect as well. We also performed some market research to understand how our farmer, farmer techniques uh, evolved at the present times and actually we piloted and testing to have feedbacks from farmers. So all those different tools help us to understand better the needs of the farmer. After piloting and testing, we will provide the following type of contents. We will start with weather forecast information first, because from the perspective of the farmer, it really makes sense, especially in the planning and planting stages. Because farmers in rural areas, especially in developing countries, live on $1 or $2 per day. They need to actually know when it's going to rain, and based on that, they can actually buy the seed and plant. They don't have a second chance. So it's really critical for them to actually assess correctly the water forecast. The second kind of information that we're going to provide is the market information. We have understood that middlemen actually take the lion's share, okay? Because farmers don't exactly know what are the price to which they can sell their crops on the most important markets. So we're going to provide that information to the farmers so that they can bargain better and we expect that they will increase their income by at least 10%. The last kind of information is agronomy advisory services, so that farmers can actually know the better techniques, choose the better seeds, and actually increase the overall output. The channels that we plan to use are threefold. First of all, we plan to use USSD SMS. From the business perspective, it makes sense because that's the least expensive channel, but also from the perspective of the farmers, it's the most easier to use, right? After piloting and testing, we understood that farmers are very comfortable using USSD and SMS channels. The second channel that we have identified is voice-based. It is called IVR because we have actually assessed high rates of illiteracy among farmers, especially women, so we want to actually tailor a kind of channel, especially for this kind of, uh, of farmers. And the last one would be uh, close to a call center, that would be a former helpline to actually uh, uh, give advisory services for farmers uh, through the call center. To identify the partners, we try to actually uh, understand what are the local NGOs working there in Tanzania and what are the local uh, agencies from the government and the regional agencies from the government working in the field of agriculture. 
and as such TechnoServe also helped us a lot to identify the key partners working in the field because we understood that this kind of service could be successful not only based on the quality of the content but on the way you can reach farmers. Actually launching that kind of services in uh, agriculture is really a part of Tigo to increase its, its footprint and its perception as a service provider compared to an access provider. The reason is very simple business-wise because actually uh, average revenue per user are shrinking year to, from year to year so it makes sense from Tigo perspective to identify new revenue streams and ultimately in this project the content will be owned and updated by Tigo with the help of other external partners. So it's definitely part of uh, Tigo's strategy and it's not a quick gimmick just to increase the market share.